HTML forms are usually very boring, but there's no reason they can't be one of the most creative aspects of your UI. And you don't even need a library like Material Design to make that happen. In today's video, we'll build an animated login form from scratch with HTML and CSS. Notice how it moves the label up when an input field is focused, and also slides in a border underneath. But when it comes to the password, we'll throw in some JavaScript with Svelte to take things to another level. We'll write a simple algorithm to analyze the password strength, then show the end user a strength meter along with validation errors based on the content of their password. In order to make all this happen from scratch, you'll learn about CSS transforms and transition animations, pseudo elements like after, box shadows and gradients, and even a little bit of regex. If you're new here, like and subscribe. And if you like the format of this video, make sure to let me know what you want to see next in the comments. Let's start by taking a closer look at what we're building today. What we have here is just a regular HTML form input along with a label. When the user focuses in on a form input, we translate the label up along the y-axis and scale it down a little bit. This behavior was made famous by material design but you can easily implement it on your own with just a few lines of CSS. When the input is focused, we also animate in a border from the left side, but it's not handled with a border. It actually uses a CSS pseudo element, which we'll talk about later. Now our password field is really over the top. When the user starts typing, it animates this password meter based on the strength of the password. I'll show you how to use a box shadow to create this shutter-like effect for each bar in the meter. In addition, we'll also validate different patterns in the password string to show the user specific validation errors. And finally, we'll add a little button in the form input so the user can see their password text. This tutorial is designed for you to follow along step by step, and you can find the project source code on GitHub. We'll mostly be talking about HTML and CSS, but we'll use Svelte to manage our JavaScript and application state. And if you've never used Svelte before, don't worry, you're gonna love it. It's super intuitive and easy to learn. To get things started, we'll head over to svelte.dev. You'll see a command here that you can run with npx to create a new Svelte project. Go ahead and run these commands from the terminal then open up your project in VS Code, and we're ready to go. In the source directory, you'll see a file called app.svelte. This is where we'll be writing all of our code. For now, you can treat this file like a regular HTML file. We'll set up a script tag. This is where our JavaScript will go. Then a style tag is where our CSS will go. Everything outside of these tags will be our main HTML markup. Towards the end of the video, you'll learn how Svelte can magically connect your JavaScript to your HTML. Now, one side note here is that if you go into the public folder, you'll also see a global.css file. In my demo, I modified the body styles to have a black background with white text. Now, back in our main app component, we'll start by setting up the markup for the initial HTML form. We have a main element with a form element nested inside, and then inside that, we have a div with a class of field that is basically a container for the input and label. Inside of this div, we'll add the actual form input, and we'll make sure to give it a type of email. After the input, we'll add the label, and it's important that this label comes after the input. And I'll tell you why that's important when we get to the relevant CSS code. Then we'll do the same exact thing for our password field, but give it a type of password. If you open up the app on localhost 5000, you should have a basic form that looks like this. Back in our code, we'll start by targeting the form element. I'm going to be using a gray text color throughout my styles, so I'm going to set that up as a CSS variable here. That'll make it really easy to change the color of the form if we decide to in the future and then we'll set the max width of the form to 500 pixels. Then we'll define our field style, which is basically a container for the input and label. We'll give it a width of 100%, and then we'll change the position to relative. By default, a div has static positioning. The difference here is very subtle, but the most important thing to know is that when you use relative positioning, it means you can use properties like top, left, bottom, and right to control where this element sits relative to its normal position. From there, we'll give it a two pixel dashed border on the bottom that uses our text color variable. Then we'll provide a good size margin here to make room for our animations. Because I'm providing three values here, the margin will work like this. The top margin will be four rem, the left and right margins will be auto, and the bottom margin will be one rem. One rem is equal to the root font size of the HTML. So if you have a font size of 16 pixels, one rem is 16 pixels. And then we'll override a bunch of styles on the input like the outline, border, overflow, and so on. The input will basically just sit inside the container while its parent field class will handle all of the fancy animation stuff. Now, because our input has a type of email, it will automatically be validated by the browser. We can actually target the pseudo selectors of valid and invalid to give the input text a different color based on whether or not it's a valid email address. You should now have a form that looks like this. And as you can see, when you type your email address in, it goes from red to green when it becomes a valid email. And now we're ready to get into the fun stuff. Let's look at how we can make that border animation when a form field is focused. We'll do that by targeting the after pseudo element on the field. 
Many HTML elements, like a div, have pseudo elements that you can target and style. After is like an invisible element that comes after your div. It never appears in your HTML markup, but if you go into the browser's inspector, you'll see it listed there when you have a style targeting it. And in our case, we'll use it to display a border underneath the field. The advantage in this case over a regular CSS border is that we can use transforms to apply fancy animations to it. We'll give it a position of relative and then a height of four pixels, a width of 100% and a purple background. Now by default, we want this element to be hidden. We can hide it with a transform by setting the scale along the x-axis to zero. And the reason we use scale x here and not just scale is because we want to preserve the height when we animate it back in. Now by default, the transform will happen right in the middle of its position. However, we want it to animate in from left to right. So we set the transform origin to 0%. However, if you wanted to go from right to left, you could set the transform origin to 100%. Now to animate it, we simply set up a transition that targets the transform property. We'll set it for 500 milliseconds and give it an easing timing function. And then because it's relatively positioned, we'll set its top property to two pixels. That'll just move it down slightly to cover the existing border. Now, in order to have an animation, we need some sort of state change. We want that state change to happen when the input is focused. However, the actual styles we're changing are on the field div. CSS has a very useful pseudo selector called focus within. When the inner input is focused, we can change styles on the outer field div. We can set the border color to transparent, and then we'll target the after pseudo element and we'll set its transform to scale x1 and that'll make it appear to slide in from left to right. At this point, you have a cool looking animated border, but the label isn't positioned right at all. So how do we create that material design label animation? In the label class, we'll first set a z index of negative one. Remember in the HTML, the label comes after the input. So technically it sits on top of it, but setting a z index of negative one will make the label as if it sits behind the actual form input will make its position absolute, which means it's relative normally to the entire document or the next relatively positioned element further up in the tree, which in our case happens to be the field div, which contains the label. Next, we'll use a transform to move along the Y axis and with a negative value that will move it up higher along the Y axis. We'll set a transform origin of 0% and then also set up a transition here to animate it. Now, just like our animated border, we can target the label by using field focus within. When it's focused, we'll go ahead and transform it with a scale of 0.08, making it slightly smaller, and then we'll translate it further up the y-axis. At this point, your animation should work, but you'll notice when we type into the form, the label comes back down into the form field, covering up the user's text, and that's not going to work. This is why it's important that the label comes after the input, because it allows us to target the input when its placeholder is not shown, or in other words, when the user has typed something into the form. Then we can use the plus sign to target the next sibling that has a class of label. So this means the label will be positioned in the right spot if the field either has focus or if it has text inside the input. And now we're ready to start building out our password validation meter. We'll go back into our HTML markup and add a div with a class of strength. Then inside that div, we'll have four spans, each with a class of bar and each with a unique class for bars one, two, three, and four. Then directly below that, we'll add an unordered list with a few validation error messages. Now up in our CSS, we'll define the strength class as a flexible row that has a height of exactly 20 pixels and a width of 100%. Now each of the bars inside this flexible row will have a margin right of five pixels, a height of 100%, and a width of 25%. So each individual bar in the password meter will take up exactly 25% of the parent's width. Now each individual bar can be animated in or out with a little shutter effect using a box shadow. So we'll set that up as a transition now. And then our box shadow will be inset with an offset on the X axis of zero pixels and an offset of 20 pixels on the Y axis. The result of this code is an inner shadow that covers up the entire element because remember the parent element's height is exactly 20 pixels and the offset Y here is exactly 20 pixels as well. When we want to show the colors inside one of these bars, we can simply set the box shadow to none. Now each individual bar has its own color gradient. So for bar one, we'll set a background that's equal to a linear gradient that moves from left to right. On the left side, we'll have red, and then it will gradually transition to orange red on the right side. Then we'll do the same thing for all the other bars after that, where the color on the left side is the color that ended on the right side from the previous bar. Your demo at this point should have four gray bars. But if you go back into your source code and comment out the box shadow, then you should see your color gradient. Okay, so at this point, everything we've done has been just plain HTML, CSS. But now we're going to make this app reactive and interactive with Svelte. 
The first thing we'll do is go up into our script and add a variable for strength as a number that starts at zero and a second variable validations, which starts as an empty array. And the beauty of Svelte is that this is all you have to do to create reactive state in your application. Anytime the strength or validations values change, the component will re-render to display the latest values. In our case, we want the state to change every time the user types into the password form field. And we'll do that by running a function that validates their password after each input. This function will take the event as an argument, and then we can get the actual string value of the password by calling event target value. Now to validate the password, we have four different rules that we want to apply. And we can define those rules as an array where each value in that array is a Boolean value that's true or false whether or not the user has passed that rule with their input. So if the password length is greater than five, then we know that the validation rule at index zero has been passed. The next rule at index one in the array performs a regex search. Regular expressions are pretty weird, but we have some pretty simple use cases here. This first rule will search the string for any capital letters ranging from A to Z. If it doesn't find any, it returns negative one. So we know we have a capital letter in the string if it's greater than negative one. Our next validation will search through the digits of zero to nine to see if they have a number in their password. And the fourth and final validation will look for a series of special characters. Now at this point, we have an array of four Boolean values that will be updated every time the user types into the form. In JavaScript, we can calculate the total strength of the password by adding up these four Boolean values, assigning the number one to each true value. An easy way to do that is with array reduce by simply adding the accumulated value to the current value, giving us the sum of all the values in the array. That's actually all the JavaScript code we need at this point. Our next step is to bind it to the actual HTML. To use our validate password function, we need to go down to our password input and listen to the input event, which we do with on and svelte. Every time the user types into the form, the input event is fired and then runs our validate password event handler. That'll update the state of the application. Now we need to put that state to use by binding it to our HTML. In Svelte, we can bind a class using this class directive. What this does is it only applies the bar show class, which will remove that box shadow when the right side evaluates to true. So we'll show the first bar when the strength is greater than zero. Then we'll show the second bar when it's greater than one, greater than two, three, and so on. Now below that, we either want to show a green check mark or a red X, depending on whether or not that validation has been passed. We can look at each validation by its index and then use a ternary operator to display a check mark when true or an X when false. And then we can follow the same pattern for each validation message. At this point, if you open up your demo, you should be able to type into the password field and see it reactively update the state and the UI. And each time the password goes stronger, it should show the password bar with a shutter-like animation. Now we've already done a lot at this point, but there is one more thing I wanna show you. And that's implementing a way for the user to preview their password before submitting it. We'll go up into our JavaScript and first add a new property called show password. Then in our CSS, I'll create a new class here called toggle password, which just absolutely positions a button so it is displayed in the right side of the actual form input itself. From there, we'll go into our HTML and right below the label for the password, we'll add a span that has the class of toggle password. There are a few different ways we could implement this, but I think a kind of unique way to do this is to have the user preview their password by hovering over the actual button itself, as opposed to clicking on it. We can do that by listening to the mouse enter event, and then we'll pass an anonymous function here that simply toggles the show password property to true. And then on mouse leave, we'll toggle the show password value back to false. Then inside the actual button content, we'll use a ternary operator here to show a different emoji based on the state of show password. Then the final magic to convert this from a password field to a text field is to go up here to the input type. And where we have a static string value for password, we'll use a dynamic ternary that changes it from password to text based on the state of the application. And now at this point, you should be able to preview the password value by simply hovering over the emoji. Like, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up there. If you wanna see more spelt content or have more project ideas, make sure to let me know in the comments. And if you want access to more advanced content, consider becoming a pro member at Fireship.io. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.